It's been six months since Elon Musk's SpaceX launched its Starlink early access program to the general public, and the satellite internet service has already attracted more than 10,000 users in its initial weeks of operation. In order to acquire first-hand accounts of the service from real people, CNBC spoke with more than 50 people who have been using Starlink. Households in Canada and 13 U.S. states participated in the survey, including California, Colorado, Idaho, Iowa, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana, Ohio, Oregon, Washington, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. California, Colorado, Idaho, Iowa, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, Montana, Ohio, Oregon, Washington, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. In addition, the majority of these Starlink users live in rural or isolated locations, such as agriculture or wilderness, where they have limited or no access to terrestrial internet services, and a handful do not have any connection at all. SpaceX sold the client equipment at a significant discount to its true cost, with the business currently bearing around two-thirds of the total cost of the customer equipment. Users' upfront prices ranged from $550 to as much as $800, depending on factors such as taxes, shipping fees, and other equipment required for installation, such as roof mounts or third-party products. The majority of consumers thought the $99 monthly fee was reasonable, and that it was typically a bargain compared to the prices of alternative satellite broadband providers and terrestrial options especially given the average speed of Starlink service. NASA Administrator Gwyn Shotwell said last week that SpaceX does not intend to introduce tiered pricing to consumers, stating that the company wants to try to keep it as simple and transparent as possible. Shotwell also stated that the company wants to keep it as simple and transparent as possible. Starlink's internet service, according to SpaceX, is exceeding 100 megabits per second download rates, 20 megabits per second upload speeds, and latency at or below 31 milliseconds, according to a February filing with the Federal Communications Commission. Latency is defined as the amount of time it takes a signal to travel back and forth from a destination on an internet network, and it is measured in milliseconds. Latency and download speeds are important metrics for an internet service provider to track and analyses. The FCC report from the company was consistent with what CNBC had heard from customers, who reported download speeds ranging between 60 megabits per second and 150 megabits per second, with some reporting peak speeds as high as 200 megabits per second. Most users reported latency of roughly 30 milliseconds, with some reporting latency as low as 20 milliseconds which was consistent with expectations. As the business launches more satellites, Musk vowed earlier this year that Starlink's performance will continue to improve. He stated that speed will double to roughly 300 megabits per second later this year, and that latency will be more regularly in the 20 millisecond range. Due to the fact that SpaceX does not yet have its whole satellite fleet in space, the company has cautioned that users may encounter service interruptions during the beta. Over the course of a 24-hour period, the majority of users had a number of downtimes lasting between 3 and 5 minutes. A few customers reported downtimes ranging from 10 to 20 minutes, with some users reporting downtimes as short as 20 seconds at other times. A countdown timer is also provided by the Starlink application, which indicates when the next satellite is likely to restore service. Fiber or internet delivered through underground fiber optic cable provides upload and download speeds that are significantly faster than satellite internet but, as companies such as Google will tell you, building the infrastructure necessary to bring fiber to people's homes is not a quick process. The fact that there are fewer sharp-elbowed competitors and that there is significantly less red tape to cut through gives every reason to believe that services like Starlink will reach the vast majority of underserved communities long before fiber is deployed in any significant number of locations. In addition, recent FCC filings suggest that Starlink may eventually be used as a dedicated phone line, which would be quite convenient. It's also important to remember that we're dealing about Elon Musk here. SpaceX is the only firm on the world that has developed a landable, reusable rocket that is capable of carrying payload after payload into orbit for an extended period of time. That's a significant edge in the race to the moon for commercial purposes. Furthermore, Musk stated in 2018 that Starlink will assist SpaceX in generating the income necessary to fund the company's long-held goal of establishing a base on Mars. 
Moreover, if and when that day comes, it's conceivable that SpaceX will attempt to create a satellite constellation on the planet Mars as well. As a result, Starlink subscribers may find themselves serving as test subjects for the development of future Martian wireless networks. While some satellite internet providers claim to deliver low-latency broadband speeds no matter where you are, Starlink's LEO satellites guarantee low-latency broadband speeds no matter where you are. While Starlink initially claimed speeds of 1 gigabit per second, the company has now increased that goal to 10 gigabits per second. Put another way, consumers would be able to download a 4K video in less than 30 seconds if they did not have a slow internet connection. People who live in remote areas of the world will benefit greatly from the establishment of Starlink. According to the results of a speed test, Starlink has experienced significant speed improvements in the last few months. The average download speed has increased from 65.72 megabits per second to 97 megabits per second. Actually, Starlink is steadily increasing its average median internet speeds, which currently stand at 115.22 megabits per second. The second leg of the Starlink network should at even quicker speeds, according to predictions. The latency on Starlink is surprisingly minimal, especially considering that it is a satellite internet service. Early beta tests have revealed that Starlink has an average response time of 34 milliseconds. While this is not as fast, as fiber, which can achieve latency as low as 17 milliseconds, any latency under 40 milliseconds is acceptable for the vast majority of applications. The low latency of online games is very beneficial to certain sorts of games, most notably shooters and fighting games. However, sports games like multiplayer online battle arenas MOBAs, will perform well on Starlink. Musk has confirmed as much, stating that he is hoping to reduce ping times to less than 20 milliseconds. The fact that Starlink completely crushes competing satellite internet service providers such as HughesNet and Viasat should go without saying. Both provide download rates that are a quarter of those offered by Starlink, but with latency that is 10 times worse. Given this, it should come as no surprise that companies such as OneWeb, which is half-owned by the United Kingdom government, Amazon's Project Kuiper, Boeing, Telesat, and the governments of Russia and China are all developing satellite internet constellations. Nonetheless, getting a project of this scope and scale off the ground and into profitability is a huge undertaking in itself. While the Russian and Chinese governments may carry the majority of the financial burden, corporations such as Starlink and Amazon are taking a significant financial risk on their own. Previous satellite internet constellations have gone out of business. There's also a lot of speculation about when a Starlink initial public offering IPO, may go live. Musk responded with a tweet stating that an IPO is in the works, but that it will only take place until SpaceX has a more dependable cash flow. For Musk and Starlink, the most important thing right now is to avoid going bankrupt. Given the fact that many broadband businesses are operating in a vacuum of competition, the launch of Starlink and other satellite internet constellations is a welcome injection of competition. More importantly, the service enables places that previously had no access to high-speed internet to now be linked at broadband speeds. In the case of the Ho tribe, a Native American tribe based in western Washington state along the Pacific coast, being connected to Starlink was like being catapulted into the 21st century. Several members of the Ho tribe tweeted that better internet speeds assisted them with remote learning and access to healthcare. Because of Starlink's wireless nature, it can reach any location on the planet, eliminating the need for cable infrastructure. As a result, rural areas that have been neglected can now be connected at high-speed internet connections. Even while the cost of $99 is still prohibitively expensive in many regions of the world, given the fact that Starlink will face competition from other firms, costs will most certainly decline over time. Elon Musk hopes to finish the Starlink broadband constellation by the end of 2022, according to his website.